Okay, hello, this is Mr. Weber, and you are watching video lecture number 42. Today we are going to cover Manifest Destiny, uh, South and North. We have three sections today. Uh, the first is the push to the Pacific, then we're going to look at the Plains Indians, and finally, the fateful election of 1844. So for a quarter century after the annexation of Florida in 1819, the boundaries of the United States remained the same. Although the extension of slavery into new territories had become a bone of contention between North and South in the Missouri Controversy of 1819 and 21, uh, the settlement of that crisis by the Missouri Compromise had been accepted by all. Uh, moreover, with the rise of mass party politics, uh, both major parties courted support from both sections and were therefore eager to keep slavery out of public debate. But the land hunger of white North Americans continued unabated. Uh, to the Southwest, American settlers had, pa had, had pressed beyond national borders into the newly independent nation of Mexico, where they came to dominate the northeastern province of Texas. When the Mexican central government attempted to bring the Americans under closer central rule, they rebelled uh, and successfully established their own independence. Their, their, their request then for annexation to the United States was initially rebuffed. Uh, Texas was a slave-holding republic and Martin Van Buren was fearful that his party would split over the issue. Texas was not the only territory attracting the attention of Americans, however. In the early 1840s, large numbers of settlers began traveling over land to the Oregon Territory, uh, to its south, California, uh, also with its fertile valleys and great harbors attracted both settlers and strategic interest. Back east, the heady optimism resulting from explosive economic growth and American pride in the creation of a new society fed this expansionist ideology and that took the label Manifest Destiny. With sentiment for territorial expansion rising in both North and South, Southern Democrats, fearing that an independent Texas might abandon slavery and pose a threat to the security of the institution, began a new push for annexation. Whigs and many Northern Democrats were, were opposed, uh, but the Democratic Party's 1844 convention united the party behind an expansionist candidate named James K. Polk and a promise to pursue expansion in both Texas and Oregon. Although the anti-slavery Liberty Party complicated the election, uh, Democrats took their victory as an endorsement of vigorous pursuit of what they deemed as America's manifest destiny. So let's have a look at this closer by, by examining the first section, which is the push to the Pacific. In 1845, John L. O'Sullivan coined the phrase Manifest Destiny. Uh, he felt that Americans had a right to develop the entire continent as they saw fit, which implied a sense of cultural and racial superiority. Uh, the Oregon country stretched along the Pacific coast from the border with Mexican California to the border with Russian Alaska and was claimed by both Great Britain and the United States. Oregon fever raged in 1843 as thousands, lured by reports of fine harbors, mild climate, and fertile soil, journeyed for months across the continent to the Willamette Valley. By 1860, about 250,000 Americans had braved the Oregon Trail. Uh, many died en route uh, from disease and exposure, although relatively few died from Indian attacks. Some of these pioneers left the Oregon Trail and traveled south along the California Trail, uh, settling along the Sacramento River in the Mexican province of California. To promote California's development, the Mexican government took over uh, these California missions uh, that were established initially by Catholics uh, and liberated the 20,000 Indians who worked on them. Uh, many of whom intermarried with mestizos and worked as laborers and cowboys on large cattle ranches. The rise of cattle ranching created a new society uh, and a new economy as agents from New England, 
uh, assimilated to Mexican life and married into the families of the, the uh, Californios. Uh, many American migrants in California had no desire, though, to assimilate into Mexican society and hoped for eventual annexation to the United States. However, at that time, American settlers uh, in California were too few. All right, let's go to the next section, which is the Plains Indians. As the Pacific bound wagon trains rumbled across Nebraska, the migrants encountered the Great Plains a vast sea of grass stretching north from Texas to Saskatchewan in Canada uh, and west from the Missouri River to the Rocky Mountains. Nomadic buffalo hunting Indian peoples roamed the western plains while the tall grasslands and river valleys to the east were home to semi-sedentary tribes. A line of military forts stretching from Fort Jessup in Louisiana to Fort Snelling in Minnesota policed the boundary between white Americans and what Congress in 1834 designated as permanent Indian territory. For centuries, uh, the Indians who lived on the eastern edge of the plains, such as the Pawnees and the Mandan in the upper Missouri River, uh, subsisted primarily on food crops, corn and beans, uh, supplemented by buffalo meat. They also exchanged goods with traders and travelers along the Santa Fe Trail, uh, which cut through Comanche and Kiowa territory as it connected Missouri and New Mexico. By the early 1840s, goods worth nearly a million dollars moved along the trail each year. By the 1830s, the Kiowa, the Cheyennes, and the Arapahoes had also adopted this horse culture uh, and allied with the Comanches, uh, they dominated the plains between the Arkansas and the Red Rivers. Now, as European horses enhanced the mobility and wealth of the plains Indians, European diseases and guns uh, thinned their ranks. A devastating smallpox epidemic spread northward from New Spain in 1779, lasting through 1781, taking the lives of half of the plains peoples. Now, the powerful Sioux uh, who acquired guns and ammunition from French, Spanish, and American traders along the Missouri River, also remained buffalo hunters. Uh, as nomadic people who traveled in small groups, the Sioux largely avoided major epidemics and increased their numbers. Okay, our last section then is the fateful election of 1844. The election of 1844 determined the American government's Western policy. Uh, to thwart rumored British schemes of North American expansion, uh, Southern expansionists demanded the immediate annexation of Texas. Oregon fever uh, and manifest destiny were also uh, altering the political and diplomatic landscape in the North. Responding to Oregon conventions, that called for an end to the joint occupation of the region. Uh, in 1843, a bipartisan national convention demanded that the United States seize Oregon and all the way to the 5440 uh, North Latitude. Texas and Oregon became the central issues in the election then of 1844. Democrats selected James K. Polk, who was a slave owner uh, and an expansionist who favored annexation of both Texas and Oregon. The Whigs nominated a man named Henry Clay, you should be familiar with him, uh, who again championed his American system of internal improvements, high tariffs, and national banking that begrudgingly supported just the annexation of Texas. Polk's ultimate strategy of linking the issues of Texas and Oregon was successful. Um, immediately after Polk's victory, Democrats in Congress approved annexation of Texas by a joint resolution to bring it into the Union. Okay, this does conclude then video lecture number 42. Please answer the review questions at the bottom of the screen and continue on with your work.